Nick, the takeover showman, has over $3 million in lifetime tournament winnings. The New Yorker is best known for claiming the $2.1 million first place prize at the World Poker Tour's 2005 World Poker Finals. This year, Shulman returned to Foxwoods and came up just short of his second WPT title. His second place finish was good for over $800,000. Shulman is a formidable shorthanded player because of his aggressive playing style. When exactly would you consider a game to be shorthanded? I guess like six or five people and under. I don't really know. There's probably like an, an exact number. I would say six or under. How do you have to adjust your starting hand standards when you're playing shorthanded? Um, it certainly goes down. You know, it, it still depends on who you're playing with. And, and sometimes at a full game, you, you can actually play more hands because it looks like you have a better hand if you raise when it's nine handed from early position. But it goes down. It, it goes down, you know, significantly. I mean, uh, Certain hands like King Jack and, and Queen Jack, like paint two paint cards that would be, you know, a pretty easy fold in a nine handed game become playable and even incorrect to fold. Do you think that your play should become more aggressive if it's short handed? Sometimes, you know, uh, generally speaking, more aggressive just by playing more hands that you're supposed to play and uh, having less people to worry about, but people also know that so you know, that makes it difficult too because they know that you're lowering your hand requirements and stuff like that. What do you think is the best way to play if you're playing shorthanded and there's another player at your table who's very aggressive? You, you want to try to induce mistakes from him. I mean, you know, you, you can play pots with him and, and, and uh, you know, you're liable to win a big pot. So sometimes I'll, I'll see a flop with a hand that I wouldn't usually play and try to, you know, really win a huge pot from a guy like that. But it's tough, you know, you, you either, you can't let him run you over. You need to take a stand at some point, whether it's a, a key hand where he raises defending your blind in a spot where normally you wouldn't raise there, but you need to let him know, you know, that he can't just completely run the table over. Do you think it's ever a good idea to just wait for premium hands when you're playing shorthanded? No. You yeah. should always be opening up your game? Pre pretty much. I mean, th there might be some rare exceptions, but no, yeah. Since the blinds are coming around more quickly, is it also a good idea to steal the blinds and the antis more often? Or what are your opinions on stealing blinds and antis and shorthanded yeah, play? Yeah, well, I, you're playing more hands, so, so you know, you the, the blinds are coming around quicker, so, you, you know, you're going to be maybe raising more hands per when the blinds come, you know, as opposed to in a full game. But, yeah, I, got, I mean, it's just a better idea to play more hands, you know. I mean, it's, it's the blinds are coming around quicker, eating away at your stack, so you, need a, you can't blind out, so you're sort of forced to. But, so, yes. <laughs> How important is position? Um, very. It's important. Just as much so as it would be in a regular game? I think it's... It's more important shorthanded because you, you you know you can play with hands that, that you wouldn't play in a full ring game and you know position position can be everything that could be like your hand shorthanded so to speak where in a full game there's a lot of spots that you just can't get into. If you're in the button or in the small blinds in a shorthanded game, is it usually a good idea to try and make a raise, put a raise in there to just take down the big blinds? It really depends who's in the big blind. Um, a lot of times I'll fold the button because everyone expects you to raise and if it's someone who's you know, if I feel like they're going to raise it, you know, I'll, I'll fold a weekend and, and raise from early position. But generally, I guess if you, if you don't know the blinds, it would be a good idea probably to raise with, with almost any two late in these tournaments. But there, there's a lot of spots where I'll fold the button or, or fold the small blind when you know the players. So what about if you're playing against opponents who are weak players and you think that they're passive players? How should you adjust your game in shorthanded play? Uh, you should just try to keep on top of them. You just, just stay really aggressive, you know. Keep putting them to the test. And if they're playing really weak, you know, you just want to get in a lot of pots with them. And, and even if they call you pre-flop, you might be able to take it down on the flop, you know, relatively easily if they don't have anything. And, you know, it's tough to make hands. I mean, <laughs> so. What about when you do make a big hand? How can you trap the other players if there's only six players at the table? Um, it, it really depends on, on who the player is, you know, if... Uh, if it's someone who's liable to bet the flop all the time, you know, a lot of times I'll check to them. You know, it, it's really player-based. Like, a very aggressive player, sometimes it's smart to lead out shorthanded because they're liable to raise and put in more than if you had checked and they just bet, you know, because now they're raising your bet. So if you bet 100000 and they make it 300 that's different than if you check and they only bet 100 then you raise and they fold. So I like always betting, always leading out. 
because people don't know what you have, and then when you do have a hand, they might take a stand at the wrong time, and you can get them for you know a lot of chips. What about pre-flop play? Do you think you should be raising more often? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and continuation to, bets on the flop, or yeah, I mean that's that's my style. You know, there's there's very successful players that play, you know, very differently. That that's that's the way I would play. Do you think short-handed play is better for the better players? Yes, because there's just more flops. There, there's more. Uh, there's more. You know, hand. There, you you match up with other people more. You, you take a flop more, and or you're raising someone's blind more. They're raising you, and, and you know, in a full game, you're you're not playing as many pots, and you're not entering as many hands. So it's just it's the better player wants to be in as many pots as possible. So in shorthanded play, you're also able to maybe get more tells on your opponent since they're involved in more hands? Probably, yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you see a guy in a full game play only three or four hands and you don't get a real good gauge or in shorthanded, he plays ten hands and you might be able to pick something up, definitely.